for, for our um, any of our viewers who haven't seen that project, would you like to just say a couple of words about what it is? Yeah. No, uh, uh, Marine DZ um, facility is uh, actually um, an any power um, power plant, so a customer of us, uh, which has a facility in, in south of Italy, where, where is Brindisi. And there, since 2008, we have a, here an F-class gas turbine, which is uh, named uh, AE94.3A, which since then, so since 2008, is burning, is using, let's say, um, hydrogen mix blended in, in natural gas uh, uh, up to 25% uh, as, a, as a fuel. Yeah. And um, we, we know with minor adaptation on you know, burners, auxiliaries of balance of plan, and is the clear demonstration in that case that uh, gas turbine can run, let's say, with a blend uh, fuel with, with hydrogen. And in some way, I will say that Brindisi is anticipating what will be the, let's say, the, the, the future, the future situation. So the fluctuation of, uh, uh, in the content of, uh, of, of fuel of hydrogen. And we, we have been capable to manage, to handle, because uh, our fleet, uh, our, let's say, our gas turbine uh, have the, the, the capability to manage uh, the, let's say, fuel gas composition, let's say, depending on, uh, on, on the chemical composition, hydrogen included. And they are conceived since the, the design phase uh, as, uh, as dual fuel. And so they can keep both the possibility to run uh, with the uh, hydrogen blending gas uh, while keeping their possibility to run 100% natural gas. So I think it's that flexibility on the part of the operators that is uh, one of the things that is feeding the ability of those plants to provide that flexibility. Well, Fuel flexibility means flexibility within the system. Yeah, flexibility will be, let's say, more and more an important world of the future uh, energy context. One of the key words of the future, of the I think, words. So yes. that we'll be looking forward. Yeah. Well, things are, are certainly moving very fast. Um, are we expecting more news from Antar Del Green Tech? Um, let's not say within that 10-year period that you spoke about for 100% hydrogen, but perhaps, you know, this year or next year? Well, we are already working in order to, let's say, provide the full range of, of product uh, within the, the energy transition uh, segment. Uh, we will provide a uh, system to, uh, to produce hydrogen, complete system to produce hydrogen and innovative uh, system to store energy. So the two pillars I was saying before, so the long term storage and the short, medium, short term storage. So that uh, hydrogen production, uh, is that electrolysis? Yes, yes, is that yes. electrolysis? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, our idea is to uh, to set up around electrolyzers uh, the same kind of business model we have around gas turbine today. So today, with the mother company, we have uh, we manufacture, we design, manufacture gas turbine within our premises. We supply gas turbine within power generation plant. And uh, we have uh, the important after sales part and the, so the service where we uh, maintain maintenance and service to the gas turbine. Well, we want to replicate the same kind of business model around the electrolyzers. So supply complete systems so of manufacture within our premises electrolyzers, supply electrolyzers, hydrogen plant, I would say, uh, on a turnkey basis. So as a PC contract. Uh, together with, let's say, system to um, uh, state-of-the-art digital tools uh, to operate uh, and, 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 and maintain, to provide di diagnostic to the, the customer, uh, so that the, the system can produce hydrogen uh, uh, in, in the optimal way. So hydrogen production cost, we, which build, let's say, the, the key for, let's say, for the, for the economics, uh, will be, let's say, um, defined according to the cost of carbon in that moment, uh, the level of uh, CO2 emission, uh, the cost of renewable energy. So the capability to handle this very complex system of the energy business of the future. Not only, let's say, big plants to supply hydrogen, but also 
uh, small units, a small application, because a- another, let's say, important key element uh, of the energy framework uh, will be, let's say, the distributed energy. So small grids will uh, play an important role uh, because they will be capable to support the management uh, of the, the grid instability locally. So again, uh, um, we think that small units will open up new possibilities uh, to produce hydrogen or to produce energy locally and manage locally some microgrids. And also micro turbines, which are already part of our portfolio, will play in the same kind of, let's say, business model. And um, we were talking before about uh, energy storage. So we, we said, we have just said that we will need 20 times more capability of storage compared to what we have today. So we are committed to develop uh, those uh, systems, which are the, the, the storage system, which uh, in, in, in my personal opinion is even more compelling than, uh, than hydrogen because it's needed now. It's needed really now. And um, we are working around two um, interesting technology, uh, both of them uh, uh, having the characteristic to be very flexible. Very, again, flexibility, <laughs> is flexibility, yeah. Yeah. flexibility is a key word. The first one is named ETCC, which is Energy Transition Combined Cycle. Yeah. And uh, it, it is, let's say, the integration of... Uh, of a, a so-called CO2 battery, so a, a storage system, a thermodynamic system a cycle, which uh, store and release energy, compressing and uh, expanding CO2, integrated within a gas turbine plant. So we think that, uh, and this is already available, and can, let's say, complement the, uh, the capacity of a, uh, of a traditional gas uh, Base power plant uh, together with uh, the um, this storage system, very flexible. Let's say with no um, life uh, duration uh, issue, which is uh, unfortunately a characteristic of the present uh, uh, storage system uh, uh, of the energy today, which which is uh, um, which are the, the lithium batteries. Yes. Which are available. It's a technology well proven, well known, but have kind of drawback, which is the, the limitation in, in time and depending also on the cycle. A system like that has no limitation in time, neither on time, in life, nor in, in cycling. So you, you can use, let's say, whatever, whatever is needed depending on the on, on that moment. And a second, and a second, let's say, technology we are focused on having the same cata- cap- uh, characteristic of a uh, flexibility is the uh, redox flow batteries again ah. which again have a, a very longer longevity in in terms of uh, let's say again capability to to face um, cycling uh, not uh, let's say forecasted file cycling so intermittency uh, and flex highly flexible I can see why as a chemical engineer you'd find that a particularly uh, yeah, enjoyable yeah. technology <laughs> Um, yeah, and alongside and, yeah, the, the, yeah. That, that word of flexibility, it seems to me, listening to the kind of packages that you're putting forward, um, that um, one of the things that you're aiming to do is to uh, de-risk uh, these new and perhaps um, uh, un- unfamiliar markets uh, for some of the utilities and the players that you're providing these to, providing an EPC, a, a turnkey packages under EPC um, uh, uh, providing the finance, providing long-term uh, maintenance contracts and performance contracts so that um, the, it's, a, it's a joined, um, a, a, a sort of joint management of that, of, the, of, of these new technologies gives, yeah, it, gives some confidence to the, to the utility on yeah, the other side. I would say that is a way to enter in this new segment, uh, as you said, smooth uh, uh, in the risk. Because if on one side we shall, let's say, develop and face technologies that we are not, that are not already part of our experience and portfolio. On the other side, we cope with the capability of handling complex uh, system like an EPC or turnkey contract and the capabilities to serve for long time, for, for, for long time, our customer as we do in, in the service business. So it's a way to, you know, to, 
to, to manage the entrance in this new segment of the, of the business. There are other technologies we are working and we are looking with interest. Uh, and this, let's say, interesting is due to the fact that uh, we will have to face, uh, let's say, uh, renewable energies and for science for us will have to coexist. This is a fact for a, quite a long period of time. And um, they, they kind of have to help, help each other, let's say. And um, carbon captures which also European Union has recognized as an important technologies to reach the 2050 goals, uh, let's say, can support, uh, let's say, the a smoother exit from the fossil fuels technologies. Uh, of course, uh, the, the, the economics, uh, uh, let's say, are not so easy to be found, and uh, capture carbon is just the first step. The, first step, the important path part is also use the carbon after having captured. And so I would say that here there is quite a lot of the search of development uh, around the world, uh, what to do uh, with, let's say, with the CO2, the capture of CO2. Uh, it can already be used in, in chemical industry, in cemetery. But uh, I have heard and seen uh, quite interesting uh, um, startups and spin off working around, uh, let's say, making uh, food for, let's say, animals or whatever from CO2. So you know, this is a very, uh, uh, there are a lot of innovations around the, the capability to, let's say, the, 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 of uh, reuse CO2. It sounds so nice. on, one, on one side, carbon capture, let's say, can uh, uh, support uh, to uh, provide electricity, dispatchable electricity. So what, what we need in, in order to, let's say, to have these two renewables and uh, um, fossil coexistence uh, for, for science uh, can, let's say, smooth the, the instability of renewables, so providing dispatchable uh, power generation uh, and carbon capture can ensure that this is carbon-free electricity. And this, is, uh, this is important. And again, reuse the CO2 and, and find a, 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 business, a business case for a use in CO2 can, let's say, smooth the transition uh, up to 2050, where I mean, well, we need the goal. The, the goal is the goal is not to have any more fossils. Yes, Excellent. and I, I, I would I would like to to make a, let's say a kind of a note on on this on, on the fact on fossils fuels. I mean, um, we we know that um, the, the goal is very is very ambitious. Okay, get to 2050, and and as we have said. Uh, there will be needed, let's say, gigantic investment, uh, a, a lot of effort in, in R&D. So it's not going to be a piece of cake. Definitely not. We have a kind of uh, uh, a, a fight to, to do, but we have to fight against CO2 emission and not against technology. And this is important, in my, in my opinion. So let me joke and, and say hands off to the machinery. Because, I mean, they, they are a kind of uh, 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 European product, uh, I would say. Let's say they are part of European culture. They, they have, today, they are the results of 150 years of uh, development. And, and they are providing up to date. And will, they will continue providing for a certain number of years uh, uh, safe and stable and dispatchable power gen gen electricity and uh, let's say with comparably low investment they can uh, let's say evolve yes. and it can evolve and can let's say be fueled with uh, biofuel or hydrogen and so their capability to provide uh, safe uh, uh, electricity can be coped with uh, a, a, a carbon free generation so i mean i think we shall protect them because uh, they will continue to play quite an important role in, in, in the future, in the future couple of decades. Yeah. Right. Well, it sounds as though we've got a lot of challenges ahead, but uh, there's a lot of innovation out there uh, to address those challenges. 
Um, and we've got some watchwords now uh, of flexibility, uh, mutual support, I would say, and, uh, and using the resources that are to hand. Um, so uh, I, I look forward to seeing what's coming, going to come out of uh, Ansaldo Green Tech. And Daniela Gentile, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you, Janice. Thank you.